Hey what's going on guys, my name is Matthew Joes and today we're going to be looking at the axial skeleton. So the axial skeleton is what's highlighted as green on the screen and it consists of the skull, the hyoid bone, vertebral column, rib cage and the sternum. So a few key points about the axial skeleton is that the axial skeleton are bones that form the central axis of the body. The appendicular skeleton on the other half articulates at joints like synovial joints as they allow for a range of movements which involve the upper limb, lower limb and stuff. The only exception for the axial skeleton is the mandible because it's the jaw and it, you know, it moves a lot. But today's lesson we're going to be focused on the vertebral columns. You know the vertebral column has the cervical C1 to C7, has a thoracic region which you know, has 12 vertebrae and a lumbar which has 5 vertebrae, sacral which is basically one but there's 5 bones fused, fused together as one and a coccyx uh, jaw which is a tailbone which is 4 bones fused together as one as well. So the learning objective is to be comparing the different types of vertebrae, also see the Latin names, parts and surfaces, uh, you know, origins and attachments of muscles and ligaments to these surfaces, and the difference between the cervical, thoracic and lumbar mainly. So, on the screen now you just have the vertebral column, so on the screen now you can see the atlas. The atlas is basically the first cervical vertebra, this is like a thin ring shaped bone, it has no body or spinous process and I will go into a bit more detail. So the cervical, you know, it goes from C1 all the way down to C7 and C7 is what's highlighted now. Then you have thoracic which starts off in the thoracic region T1 all the way down to T12. And the job of this is basically it provides a spinal uh, um, canal for the spinal cord to run as well as articulation with the ribs. And we also have the uh, coccygeal region, which is the tailbone, and is the final segment of the human vertebral column. And the uh, sacrum is just superior to it, and the sacrum forms the posterior wall of the pelvic region, and it's a triangle in shape, if you can you know, slightly see it. And you have the lumbar, which is like the most important part, because most people, when they have you know, a sciatica or some sort of a prolapsed disc or something, is usually in the lumbar region. So here's a lateral view. So you've got the atlas, you've got the axis, you've got all the others, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum and coccygeal. And during this lesson we're going to basically go into detail with um, each of them, how they look, the shapes. And uh, the funny thing is you would expect all the cervical to be the same and the thoracic to be the same and the lumbar to be the same. But in fact they're all individually different and some of the cervical itself like c1 c2 are different to c3 c5 c6 and so on and you know so we're going to be looking into detail all the different parts and so we're going to start with an anterior view of the first one the first cervical vertebra c1 atlas you can see the anterior arch the transverse process anterior tubercle transverse foramen and a lateral mass so i know it doesn't really make sense so the Latin terminology for those of you that's interested is highlighted in the brackets, so the English is on top, and so you can see posterior tubercle would be known as tuberculum posterius in Latin. Um, the posterior arch, arcus posterior, you've got the superior articular surface, which is, this is what binds to the uh, articulates with the occipital condyles as well as the yeah the occipital condyle. And you have the transverse process, which has you know a place where muscles and ligaments could attach, as well as that it has a transverse foramen through which the vertebral arteries, as well as veins and nerves, run through. And you got the anterior arch at the back. So this is basically a superior view. So just to get the idea of, we'll start with cervical C1 atlas in a bit detail. So if you were to highlight the occipital bone, so you can see the articulations that. C1 the atlas has so it articulates obviously with the C2 axis on the bottom and uh, the occipital bone on the top so when you assemble them together this is how they come along and attach the articulation point so you can see the fovea dentis of the C2 axis attaching to the um, dense facies of the C1 atlas so now we're going to go in really detail with the uh, cervical vertebrae. So it's basically a ring shape and it has no body. Uh, so the key features are it has no body, no spinous process, articulates with occipital and C2 axis. The vertebral foramen is circular in shape, circular, remember that. And its transverse foramen allows passage of veins and arteries. And funny thing is this is the only transverse foramen which is actually put to use 
in um, compared to all the others. So there's a picture of you know just showing the arteries and veins and the nerve going through the foramen. So now we've got parts and surfaces. So we, let's start with parts. We have an anterior arch. The anterior arch joins with the posterior arch, you know, to make a circle. And and the posterior side of it, you have the dense axis. You also have the posterior arch. You have a posterior tubercle to which uh, the rectus capitis minor, which is a back muscle, attaches to. You have the muscles of the neck involved in the rotation of the head, so as shown here, attached to the transverse process. You also have a superior articular surface to which the uh, uh, occipital condyle is attached, and the fovea dentis, which is found on the posterior side of the uh, anterior tubercle, or the anterior arch, should I say. And the transverse foramen is the apertures found on the side. Only C1 transformer allays passage for veins and arteries. You got the transverse foramen, which is large and triangular in shape. So that's one thing you wanna note down. The different surfaces are you have the anterior tubercle to which the longus uh, colli muscle as well as the ligaments attach, and it's found on the anterior posterior uh, anterior side. And this is the groove uh, or sulcus arteria or sulcus nervi uh, groove through which you know when the arteries and veins come out through the foramen they go on top of this and they pass on into the um, foramen magnum. So now let's start with the C2 axis, parts and surfaces. So you've got the, it has a body, unlike the C1, and it also has a, it's a strong as cervical vertebrae, it allows for pivotal movement of the neck, allows for attachment of muscles and ligaments on the transverse process, and it has a bifid spinous process, so it does have a spinous process, but it's bifid, so there's two ends, like it's like a cross. So again, we're going to go in with the parts of the C2 axis. So you've got the dense part, which is the most important, because this articulates with the atlas, the C1 above. Okay, and you have the uh, inferior articular process. So this is where the um, contains the facet for the inferior side. The lamina is where the ligament and flavor attaches. So here's just a small articulation of ligament and flavor. And you have the different uh, sections. So the pedicle is over here. The pedicle is one of the two short stalks. And you also have the spinous process is important because the spinous process is a place where the nuchal ligament attaches as well as the muscles of the neck. So, um, you know, spinous process is very important. Please do make sure you pause the video and you know learn these stuff because I am going in very, very, very fast rate because um, you know I have to get through all of it in less than twenty minutes. That's the aim. So yeah, the transverse process um, and uh, is next. The transverse process is where muscles and ligaments attach. You then also have the okay. There's a video of where how muscles and ligaments attach to the transverse process. So then you have the dense fovea or dense axis. You've got the superior articular facet which attaches to the atlas, inferior which attaches to the C3 below it, a sigophophysial joint, so remember that. So the joint between two vertebrates are known as sigophophysial joint. And you've got the transverse foramen which transmits uh, vertebral arteries and veins, but I'm not entirely sure it depends on your body structure In most books it says that it doesn't go through that and you have the vertebral foramen as well Which is an aperture formed by the union of the vertebral body and the vertebral arch And this is the area through which the spinal cord runs through so this is pretty much the main bit now the C2 to C7 have a body C1 does not have a body. C3 to C6, the body looks the same, but C2 and C7 have a different body. Now, the surfaces, you have an apex of the dense, so this is the bit where it connects the ligament, the inferior intervertebral surface, um, you know, the discs come together, so you have a notch. Surfaces are not that important, as long as you know the um, parts. So the vertebral arch is obviously formed by the lamina and the pedicle. So now let's look at the thoracic vertebrae parts and surfaces. 
So on screen, you can clearly see that the thoracic vertebrae is not just involved in you know, giving space for the spinal cord to run in, but it also has articulation with the ribs. And the rib cage obviously protects your uh, thoracic region, your lungs, your heart, and everything like that. So the thoracic vertebrae, there's 12 of them, T1 all the way down to 12. They have a heart-shaped body, and the body is much bigger than the cervical body. The the body is dorsally deeper compared to ventral, so it's you know more like bended in the front like, rather than towards the back. And the foramen is smaller and circular. So the different parts we're going to start off with the lamina. We've got the pedicle. I'm not going to go through these because you've went through them previously. We've got the spinous process. Remember, the C1 atlas does not have a spinous process. The C2 has a bifid. C C7 has a longer spinous process, and this one has a spinous process which is long and sloping downwards. That's the key information. Then you have the body, is a heart shape, very flat, superior and inferior surface. So you can you can see how the vertebra of the thoracic region differs to the cervical region, and you obviously don't don't have a transverse foramen. Instead, um, you just have a transverse process, which contains a transverse costal facet, where the ribs attach. Okay, so you don't have a foramen. Instead, you have a costal facet or facet. Now, there's other superior costal facets as well as inferior demi costal facets. This is another region where the ribs attach. And be, please do pause the video and read what's on the screen because I can't go in very detail in the time limit that I do have. So the differences in the thoracic vertebra are the TH1 looks more similar to the cervical vertebra, whereas the lumbar one is what's on the screen now. So please again pause the video and do check it. So you got the inferior articular fascia, you got the vertebral foramen, which is smaller and circular, but not triangle this time. So that's one other key information you want to take on board. So next, we're going to be looking at the lumbar region. So there's five of them. They're kidney-shaped bodies, thin transverse process, so they don't have any no for foramen. The spinous process is large, short, and square, and the size of the body increases from top to bottom. Okay, so we're going to go through the different parts of the uh, lumbar region as well. So hopefully. I know that I'm talking really fast through the videos and you know you're not getting a chance but do pause the videos and read what's on the screen on the left as well as what comes up on the screen. So the vertebral body is also known as the centrum or the corpus in, in, in Latin. In the lumbar region they increase in size from top to bottom. So you've got the lamina, you've got the pedicle again, you have the spinous process um, or processes spinous in which you would refer them. You also have the um, superior articular process, transverse process, but this time it doesn't have any costal fascias because no ribs attach here. You you have a superior um, superior inferior articular fascia as well as a superior articular fascia to which up and, and the vertebra above and vertebra below attach, and you have a vertebral foramen. The foramen is an important part because now it's small and triangular. So the cervical one was large and triangular, thoracic was small and circular, lumbar is small and triangular again. So now we have, now let's take a look at the sacrum, our favourite part, which is most people leave this out, but this is the, you know, the lumbar region and the sacrum is what holds the main weight of the body and they hold a quite a lot, large amount of weight of the body. So the key point of the sacrum is triangular shaped bone forms a posterior wall of the pelvis and it carries almost most amount of the weight of the body and it's formed from five sacral vertebrae fusing together. Okay, so there's a triangle shape and you've got the different lateral, posterior, inferior, superior views. And um, so there's five of them basically fused together as one. And then we're going to go through the different parts. So you have the ala, which is, this is where the psoas major muscles attach and um, the attaches the lumbar region, you have the body of the sacrum, you now have the lateral part which is important because this gives grooves for the sacral nerve as well as articulation joints with muscles and ligaments. The base can sometimes be partially fused to the sacrum. You have the articular surface to which the pelvis attaches to. 
you also have the superior part to which the lumbar region attaches to, the fifth lumbar vertebra attaches to here. You have a posterior sacral foramen. You have a sacral canal through which the uh, nerves and sacral nerves run through and you have the sacral hiatus which is the bottom part. And now you have the different surfaces. You have a dorsal surface which contains the median sacral crest as well as the me medial sacral crest and the lateral. Okay, so the key point is that this gives attachment to sacrotuberous and sacrospinase ligaments. So again, do pause the video and you know read what's on the screen because I, it's way too, and I've written all the information in as much detail as I can. And you can also read on the left where my mouse is pointing to as well. So don't expect me to like speak across the whole thing really fast because the video is really fast and I've tried it. Put it, get everything in with as much detail as possible. So we have the final part, the final segment of the human vertebral column known as the coccyx. And the only the first coccyx has a transverse process and none of them have lamina or a spine or a pedicle or anything like that. Okay, so they're basically the tailbone, and they're also, you know, um, a place, so you've got the coccyxial uh, vertebra 1, 2, 3, 4, and they're basically, you know, sites of attachments for, like, muscles like the anal sphincter muscle, the externus anal sphincter muscles, as well as the gluteus maximus muscles, you know, those are the muscles that form the butt region of a human. And... Yeah, so once again, I'd just like to apologize because I couldn't keep up with the video and I've tried to squeeze everything into under 20 minutes. And please do pause the video and, you know, read the stuff on the screen and make sure you understand it. For those of you that need, uh, for those of you that need the uh, Latin version, I've got it on the screen um, in brackets as well, so do read up on that. Make sure you go visit www.royalchristcollege.co.uk on our website. You can find various different uh, videos as well as uh, sections where you can join up to. So if you go down to medicine, you have all the different sections. You have like the cardiovascular respiratory. So if you click into one of them, you need to sign up, and then you've got the anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology. You also have dentistry, nursing. So, you know, make sure you check it out. Uh, also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like the video, please do um, subscribe to our channel. Leave a like, thumbs up, and see you next time. Thank you for watching.